Debate. Intelligence Squared. Moving on to our final speaker against the motion, could I invite uh, Matthew Collins to come up to the podium, please? Um, you'll know him as a writer and broadcaster. He's also a painter, but um, <coughs> author of This Is Modern Art and many TV programmes. So, Matthew, take it away. Nine minutes. Uh, well, thank you to the speakers on the side that was shown so little love at the beginning of the talk. But uh, I think they all made a good case, but almost all of them, uh, what they said could be uh, different conclusions, opposite conclu conclusions could be drawn from them. Uh, and, the, and this oppositeness in every case would come under the heading of a sort of logical problem in the, um, in the proposition, which relates to aesthetic, moral, philosophical issues, you know, that uh, the market uh, is the best judge of quality in art. The clue is in the word market. You know, uh, markets are, are very, very good and possibly even the best at judging what is good for the market. So what they judge about art is not quality, which is uh, obviously a very movable word and extremely relative in our time. Uh, and, and the point's been made by a couple of speakers on the other side about the globalization of art so with its implications of amazing plurality about quality. But um, what the uh, market does is judge what will sell, uh, um, what will work for the market. So um, Georgina's lovely speech was almost hilarious in its um, <laughs> idea that the top sellers, uh, that, which uh, are the result, uh, are the, where, where, where selling is the result of what the market does, that they are the best artists, just because some of them are historically the best artists. But, uh, you know, the best and quality, however relative quality is, and however much of a, a movable notion it is, and however much of a plurality of types of art we are now faced with, um, it's not really uh, the market that decides the best, or decides quality, or decides who is the top artist. It's a sort of uh, rather uh, difficult to pin down consensus that comes through history and through many voices and through many uh, micro decisions, which all congeal, as it were, into a single decision about priority. And the, uh, those priorities, are not even really to do with ultimate goodness. They're not uh, biblical decisions. Uh, and they're not even really to do with um, philosophical notions of quality, which would be very, very difficult uh, decisions for everybody to follow or, or be interested in. They're simply to do uh, with what people like, what turns them on, and what seems to work over very, very long periods, so that you have an accepted idea of the greatness of certain artists, and then the newness and the chanciness of certain others. And you know, uh, the culture, as it were, even at the moment where, where we have lots of different cultures, those different cultures in some kind of concert, uh, some kind of ripple is going through them all, weighing up all the time established figures against um, new chancers. Some of the chancers have whole markets devoted to sanctifying their new chancy stuff. And, and that stuff becomes amusement in, in the world of culture and art. We see uh, whole nations now producing laughable um, sort of art on the level of greetings card illustrations, which sometimes Charles, who's the most charming guy I've ever met, shows in his gallery uh, alongside stuff which is a bit better. Uh, and that's the fun of, of what he does and the fun that he provides to culture. But we can't say that... Um, uh, I'm not sure if I would even say that he was the personification of the market, but even if he were the personification of the market, in the moments when he is the personification of the market, he's not judging quality, he's judging what will make the market clap. And, um, and the market, at all times, whatever form it takes, however it is personified or embodied, is only a market, following market aims and market priorities. Now, the market is made up of many different um, forms.
forms, as it were. But art is much less unitary even than the market. It's made up of a tremendously much greater number of forms. And some of these were uh, alluded to earlier in one of the talks. But even so, all of those bits and pieces are of absolutely no interest to the market except in their marketability. So when the last delightful speaker went on about some young guy whose stunts have been made into 200,000 from two pennies, all you're applauding there, if one is applauding, and I applaud it because it's fun and I don't mind it, but all you're applauding <laughs> there is a market manipulation. It's got nothing to do with people called Van Gogh who shoot themselves. Or, or a history of forms, or people called Clement Greenberg, who write very carefully worded and thought out essays and are able to perceive quality before other people have done. Nor does it have anything to do with critics who fail to see the latest good artist. It is simply an autonomous bit of activity that the market goes in for. The market supports itself. It has no interest in increasing knowledge for knowledge's sake. It has no interest in art for art's sake. It has interest in the market for the market's sake. And it's quite right that it should do that, and that's the Kantian categorical imperative that defines what the market does. And if it didn't do that, it wouldn't be any good. And we wouldn't be enjoying the range of absurdist, daft, spectacularly infantile and childish events known as art that we now come to see in such great places as these, <laughs> alongside very, very substantial work, which has something uh, aesthetic, philosophical, moral, and marvellous to offer. That is the great circus of culture that we live in now. The market is not evil, but it certainly isn't good. It's, <laughs> you know, art, again, is not, um, as I... I've already mentioned, it's not, uh, it doesn't issue from uh, the brains of saints who are conduits of the voice of God. You know, it comes out in all sorts of different ways. It has different things to say. Uh, it lays on different entertainments. Some of those entertainments are profound, some less so. Some eras call for more profundity than others. Ours happens to call for more comedy. What it likes as a taste difference to comedy is not profundity, but a sort of bleak, amusing miserabilism. This simply is the texture of our time. Um, the great man whose pad we are now hanging out in has shown us this texture and we applaud him. He is top. But that doesn't mean that he's judging quality. He, I mean, of course he has an eye for quality. But he, the, the, the market itself, it, as I said, in as much as he's got his market hat on, quality is of no interest to him. He's a pragmatist, and the market cannot be anything but pragmatic. In, in a way, artists themselves are um, probably far more solipsistically enclosed in a little world of their own... Uh, pragmatism than they would like to admit, were their heads capable of being cut off like a boiled egg and their thoughts scooped out and examined, it would turn out that they would love the market so long as they were selling well and be very angry with it if they weren't, and that's quite understandable. I don't complain about the market speakers. I think they did very well. They were fighting and losing wicket, and <laughs> I think you should applaud them. Thank you very much. Thank you.